Now, do we put f seed in it or what? Yeah. Or, yeah. We'll try something else. Steak. There we go. No shoes worth the time won't wash it away. I had seen the movie Reality Bites a few years ago. Maybe it was in like high school or college. I was watching it a couple months ago because we have not one, we have two VHS copies of Reality Bites in our house. And uh, I was watching it. I think Winona Ryder's character is like filming her friends the whole fucking movie. Like they go to uh, a convenience store and they're dancing to My Sharona and she's like filming them. And this was after I had filmed us in a grocery store, and I realized, like, literally, it uh, seemed a lot like Reality Bites. And uh, in that regard, if this were Reality Bites, I suppose I'd be, like, the douchebag Ethan Hawke character who's, like, this philosopher dropout asshole who just, like, you know, reads Nietzsche and criticizes everything. There's no point to any of this. It's all just a, a random lottery of meaningless tragedy and a series of near escapes. So I take pleasure in the details, you know? Quarter pounder with cheese. The sky about ten minutes before it starts to rain. The moment where your laughter becomes a cackle. And I sit back and I, I smoke my camel straights. And I ride my own melt. I guess that's a character. Hopefully, I guess I. I hope I'm that cool. I don't even know what. Maybe I'm Steve Zahn. <laughs> pop culture reference I feel like I'm becoming is um, well there's a few actually uh, the dude from American Beauty who like films everything with his camera and he films like the bag the plastic bag and shit and this bag was just dancing with me for 15 minutes that's the day I realized that there was this entire life behind things Look how beautiful and poetic it is. No, no, let it, let it roam. Go, go, little baggy. Run away. Run away, little baggy. No, you've killed its soul. You murdered its soul. Uh, I've sort of become that kid in a lot of ways because uh, I film everything and try to make it like poetic and like dark and shit. And then the other thing is, like, now that I'm doing a reality show about a house full of 20-somethings in Brooklyn, well, I guess I'm 30-something, I feel like I'm making the real world. And I never watched the real world, but um, somehow I ended up making it. Oh, yeah. It could be a chick Ikea's Ikea. I feel like Ikea's not as fun of an experience because it's kind of like there's, like, a route. You know nothing about They already IKEA. know what your room The first and most important mm -hmm. thing about IKEA, you have to enter through the exit and go straight to the warehouse. And because you <laughs> enter through the exit, you get food and drinks first. Ooh, oh. And then you have them and on then the you go Oh, okay. And you're like, yeah. Great idea. Hot dogs. Yes. You have the Swedish uh, pear drink. So uh, this is the backyard at 257. It's my roommate's office. It is two bar stools, 
an industrial stool, probably stolen from his art school, a piece of fence laid across the bar stools for a desk, and the mirror from our vestibule. And here's a, I think it's a crocodile head. We got all the tools lined up here on the fence, uh, wire snippers, paint brushes, you know, lighter. <laughs> there's a lighter here nailed to the <laughs> And then there's this chair that you would find like in a guidance counselor's office. So me and Peter are in this sort of competition. He texted me the other day saying that there was a great armchair on 7th Avenue. So I went to the store this morning because Park Slope is an amazing neighborhood. Like every time I go for a walk, I feel like I'm like going fishing or something. And as I'm walking up 5th Avenue, uh, I find this, this sort of mustard yellow... <laughs> So I had to bring it home, so I, like, you know, dragged it home <laughs> down Fifth Avenue while it's making, like, a, you know, a super shitload of noise. And uh, I, I knew Peter would, would go, <laughs> and as I'm walking in the door with it, he comes in and he's standing right in front of me. He's like, oh, you, you found something, huh? You found something today. <laughs> Everything was chill, everything was good Why'd she have to miss on the sewer? Everything was mine, everything was fine The grass was green and the flowers on the vine Took me halfway across the world. Yeah. So right in my eye, right when there was this guy walking, like yeah, yeah, that fucking hard-ass looking dude. Yeah, so he was like, try and fucking run me down. And I was so afraid I'm just gonna hit it. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. My eye was yeah. dying, and I was <laughs> yeah. just looking through my left eye. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I was like. Oh. <laughs> gonna hit him and then he's gonna hit me harder. Yeah. First one I thought was gonna like chop my head off, man. It's like, it's like odd job, off. yeah. It is like odd job. Oh shit! <laughs> I killed someone else. Mm. Cool. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was dope. Let's <laughs> try to play hockey in here. Oh yeah. Uh, right. Can you just stand out of the Christmas lights? Let me try and get to land on your head. <laughs> you might have to lean into it a little bit. It is May 8th, the night of the sludge party side project in the basement. We're getting ready. We hope it's a good one. We're doing it the last fucking minute, of course, but uh, we're doing it. Before the party, we're in the kitchen, and uh, we look out the window, and we see Caitlin talking to our neighbor, who was in, like, the Gulf War or some shit. And this guy, we've had a little bit of a rough history. My little brother was riding his skateboard out front of the house, and this guy, like, cussed him out. He was like... You stay off my fucking stoop. You see that? This is my fucking stoop. You stay off it. You know? Like, right in front of me. So, then he's like, he turns to me, he's like, this your friend? <laughs> my 17-year-old brother. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's my friend. And he's like, I got, I got, I'm having flashbacks. I was in the war. The skateboard makes me have flashbacks. So, I'm thinking, there's no fucking way this guy's gonna let us finish our concert. Even though it was a Friday night. I just thought this guy's gonna be having some kind of, you know, <laughs> nuclear flashbacks of the Gulf War. No fucking way. 
<laughs> See, that should be that should be on the poster. That should definitely be on the poster. I'm not crazy. Uh, it's back here in our little sacred grove. Oh, there it is. The holy smokers. Boom. So what happened was um, we were going to initially going to start it was the first party we could have some stuff in the backyard. We've got these beautiful Christmas lights. We've got this beautiful stage. So we were going to start in the backyard with uh, the stand-up comedian. And we were going to have the PA back there for her to tell her jokes or whatever. And uh, she was like a programmer. So all her jokes were like about programming. I, I use Linux, but it's just Mint. It's not Debian, you know. <laughs> and you ever had that thing happen to you where you, hear, you walk by or, or someone drives by you... And after she's done performing, um, I get up there to sort of MC. Me and Kiki, and I think Jake were there. We were all going to have microphones. And it was Kiki's birthday. So I suggested to everyone present that we should sing happy birthday to Kiki. You know, we're just about finishing up our happy birthday chorus. I'm sort of leading the, the, the mob, you know, and um, with the microphone. And as we're finishing... <laughs> We're all singing, and there's a screaming, Hey! 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 And uh, his voice is louder than all of us singing in the backyard. And I look over, and above the sort of mass, my neighbor's head is perched over the fence, peeking over the fence. He's saying, Knock that shit off, all right? Knock that shit off! All right? Oh, okay. Knock it off! All right, Woo. sorry. We're done. And we're like, you know, sorry, sorry, it's her birthday. And he's like, I don't give a fuck whose birthday it is. But it's her birthday. I don't give a fuck whose birthday it is. <laughs> Cut it. Then the best part was he's in his yard. One of the neighbors from one of the further houses down turns his light on and throws his window open and leads out the window like it's some movie shot in New York City in 1940. Yeah, shut it, buddy. All right. All right. We will knock it off. Shut it, all right? All right, we will. Sorry. So now there are multiple neighbors yelling at us. And we were shaken a little bit, but um, we came back inside, we regrouped, and then we went down in the basement, and uh, no more PA outside ever since then. That was the highlight of that guy's year, I'm sure. You know what I mean? Just the fact that he got to fucking... Dude, he cussed my little brother out. Do you remember that? Yeah. On the skateboard? Dude, you know, you know the problem about... Is too is that most people call the cops. Yeah. The cops will never come for yeah. a noise complaint. We'll just call the yeah. fucking fire department. Oh god. Because the fire department has to come. Oh legally. my god. And every time that the fire department yeah. in New York City comes, at least one cop car has to come too. I love. I think he's great. I hope he uh, doesn't hate us. I can't believe how badly my neighbor fucking just like you know, knifed at that. You know, like, that was like, survival like, tactics in action. No, man. but like I completely respect that. Like we're not bushwick. This is like a He place made a big scene with. though. No, he really, he really didn't. I don't give a fuck whose birthday it is. Are you I, I, serious? I completely agree with him the whole time. I agree with him too. Like we should have talked to him about it. <laughs> morning party. Yes. Morning party. Mo Tuesday morning party. I'm not well. At our parties some time back, we'd have celebrities, politicians, who's who. Now we send the post office clerks and the station master. Even they come as a favor. At one point, two of the actors, these gorgeous, young, talented people, are sitting on the stool, making out and just like talking to each other in just like the most romantic way. And I was just like, man, this is fucking Romeo and Juliet right here. <laughs> Dead master, the grandfather, used to give everybody sealing wax when anything was wrong. I 
I've taken sealing wax every day for 20 years and more. Perhaps that's why I still live. Beautiful. Pack of pups. You bore a pack of pups. <laughs> you bore a pup. I was maybe like this. And like, trying to grab her pants. Okay, but now give me a five. And I think what I did was like grab her leg. Para decidir si sigo poniendo esta carne en tierra, este corazón que va de su parte solo y tu llego a. He's singing a song in Spanish with a French accent. Why aren't you singing a song in French? What happened in this video is we were all sitting in the yard. It's a morning. It's like a Tuesday morning. I think the day after Memorial Day. So everybody's still kind of in party mode and none of us really have responsibilities. So like we're just hanging out with the hangover. You know, our party kind of dragged into Tuesday and this is our morning party. It was the first time. It was so exciting for me because it was the first time I ever got up and like used the zoom function and like was moving around and I was starting to think about it more like a film rather than just like, oh, I'll just hold my camera and film somebody talking. I was thinking, well, remember in high school when I like tried to be Orson Welles, and I didn't care that I didn't have dolly tracks. I had my parents' video camera, and it was like, let me set up, you know, tableaus and ensemble shots, sort of like Wes Anderson, how he like puts nine characters into a frame, or like Robert Altman or whatever. Orson Welles does it too, but let me do it, you know, with like my friends in our high school English video project. There's some people that can dance, and then somebody tells them, okay, now improvise. The other person goes like, what? So, first thing that you do is that you take a step forward, and then a step to the side, and then a step back, <laughs> and then a step to the side. Right? If you can use your maybe your arms somehow, so then right, <laughs> and then you start fucking it up, <laughs> and you understand that if you don't really get the first basic step of the of the whatever it is, you you're unable to do anything. In order to decide to maybe. Be, Right. Are it's, just exercising, it's like a and I was like, so when I was, when I was seeing it, I was like, okay, that guy is indulging. Okay, that guy is taking too much time. No, that guy is just like too. It's not about the cupcake. It's not about <laughs> the cupcake. It's not about the problem. Mm. It's not about what you feel right now. It's about mm. the other person. It's about the relationship. What are you doing to her? What are you doing to her? You're not doing anything to her. You are trying to imagine. A dog. Right, you were way. observing the wrong things in the work. I was observing the wrong things. <laughs> exactly. And I was yeah. judgmental in my head. Yeah, but completely out of context. Right. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> morning party. Morning party. Morning. Tuesday morning party. Set to do themselves. The problem is that when you're doing that, you're revealing yourself. Over yeah. Exposing the actor through the act of acting. Yeah. Exactly. That's what it is. Perfect. Cool. That's, That's amazing. That's, that is exactly what it is. You can teach us all that. 
at the party last week, him and his girlfriend, and they were going to play on the roof. Him and his girlfriend do a duo, duo where he plays guitar and they both sing. And they fucking killed it. I mean, that was so beautiful. It was so funny. It was so spontaneous, so live. He fucking proposed to his girlfriend. At the end of their set, he got down on his knees and he proposed to her on our rooftop, New York City skyline behind him. It was incredible. Taylor? <laughs> I've been meaning to tell you something for so long! <laughs> There's only one stupid, like, barrier that separates us. Our visas! Our visas! <laughs> so, I know that story! <laughs> if anybody wants to hire us... <laughs> Taylor, what? I know your parents. Okay, great. I know your family. You too? Love your brother. <laughs> you know my sister. Yes. You know my brother? Yes. You know my mom? Yes. You know my Yes. <laughs> I had a dream. <laughs> I dreamed that I sailed away on a boat in the middle of the ocean. And I saw the whole sky. And it was... What do you want? <laughs> and it was so infinite. <laughs> This has to happen here because the universe mm -hmm. wants it. <laughs> the birds, they're coming. That's okay. They're all above us. <laughs> Taylor, for us and his magical powers, in all this crowd, and these people too! <laughs> They're watching us! They They're going to Boston! <laughs> what? <laughs> it's beautiful, but like... You know... 21... <laughs> it was really hurting. <laughs> it was really hurting. <laughs> but... This is called your mom! What? I was trying to come up with poetry. It was hard to tell if it worked. I had maybe three readers, which was plenty. The poets were poets to other poets. No one else took much notice. I had not integrity of thought. I had sensational. I had unembarrassed heart. I fucked your mom last night. She was my MILF, and I did. When it comes to love, you get what you give. I've had chlamydia three times. <laughs> I got it from your mom. <laughs> I never meant irony. I was born normal and quickly turned inside out. But I work both ways, like a reversible jacket. Sometimes navy, sometimes plaid. <laughs> you can listen to me. I'm speaking for a generation from the tiny, insurmountable kiss of pen and page. This is the story of held hands. 
the Stony Glen's reminiscence, a pageant of two Tuesdays. The door is closed, but it's also open. Please don't come in. I want you to. Oh shit, could I introduce you?